Okay, the five principles of Joe with Key. Uh, first, I'd like to ask Sayaka Reasoner to read the five principles in Japanese language. Sayaka. Hino Jojutsu no Gogen Sok, Ichi, Karuku Motsu, Ni, Temoto no Teo Daiji ni Suru, San, Yarikuri Jiu, Yon, Mochikairutoki, Katatewa Kanarazu Jo Motsu, Go, Sentan no Senga Kirenai. Thank you very much. Uh, let's enjoy that part. All right, so as per my usual way these days, I'll read the old translation and then the new translation of each principle as we go along. Uh, number one, hold the staff lightly. New translation, uh, hold the Joe lightly. <laughs> and number two, old translation, control the staff with your rear hand. A num a number, number two, new translation, hold the hand closest to your body. Hold with the hand closest to your body. A number three, old, manipulate the staff freely. Number a three, new, move the jaw freely. Number four, old, when changing the position of the staff, one hand must always have a hold. Uh, and number four, new, always keep one hand on the jaw when moving. And number five, old, the line traced by the staff is never broken. And number five, new translation, the line drawn by the tip of the jaw is never broken. So clearly, uh, same meaning both times in both old translation and new translation. Um, mostly we just try to make it a little less clumsy a little more toward the point of, which is going to be the point of, of what we talk about here probably, uh, of key moving. Not you moving or me moving, but key moving. That's why even, uh, I told you about Suzuki Sensei's comment in uh, Japan that the, the, the the, the champions who were winning the, the Tagi competition, he, his comment was that they don't have key. But believe me, they were very beautiful. And the movement was quite precise, uh, very well coordinated, and was uh, very impressive to me. So um, when you're working on your own Joe practice, remember that little story. Don't just try to be impressive uh, to do it. Of course, please do it smoothly and gracefully and fully, right? And beautifully, that's fine. But be sure that key is moving uh, through you. So the first uh, one is hold the Joe lightly. Well, whether you're doing jonage or jogi, the taigi positions, one and two, or whether you're doing jotori, where he's attacking you with the jo and you're taking the jo away from him. Uh, whichever one of those you're doing, or maybe we're just in class saying to the other person, hold the jo and don't let me move. We've done this exercise hundreds of times. Hold the jo and don't let me move. And you'll have to hold the jaw lightly and move. And uh, if you've done this exercise before, you know, it can be maddening and frustrating and uh, seemingly impossible. Particularly if you have some large brute holding the, uh, um, uh, the jaw and you are a rather diminutive person, a smaller person. But, you know, I always try to emphasize, Toei Sensei was smaller than almost any of you. He was five foot tall. It was very small. I was a foot taller plus. I was 14 inches taller than him and much bigger and stronger. And he could easily move me anytime because he understood. So holding the jaw lightly is a beginning. That's the first one. It's also a beginning. 
in, in your jail work. Just like Bo can. Okay, of course, the second one is hold the hand, hold with the hand closest to your body. And Joe, I mean, Boken, we have left hand, right hand. Everybody knows left hand is cutting it. So that's the hand you hold with. The right hand uh, is just a guide. And in both Joe and Boken, you don't need your fingers. The fingers are only there, they're not there to hold the Boken, in other words, or hold the Joe. They're there to keep the Joe from falling onto the ground. That's all they're doing. They're, they're enclosing it so that it stays in your hands. But that's not what, what makes the jaw move. What makes the, the jaw move is one point in the lower abdomen. Because when you move with jaw, everything moves. Everything in your whole, the whole mind-body moves. That mind is everywhere. So uh, if mind is everywhere, then body can go in any direction, anytime easily. Right? But, uh, we have control over where mind is. Mind is everywhere, yes, if we're free of intention to do something. But if someone has a hold of our jaw and our mind is stuck or stopped there at the jaw, then mind is not everywhere for me at that moment if my mind is stuck, if my mind is stopped at that point. So then there's not, I'm not going to be able to move anywhere. But if my, my attention is open, and if my intention is empty, not to do anything, but just to be one with the person that's holding me, then when there is, and if there is, and when there is a movement, the other person automatically follows, automatically comes. Because they're holding the jaw and their mind is stopped here. So when the jaw is moving, their mind is moving. So when their mind is moving, their body is moving. So that's the simple, simple exercise that we do in class. It's designed to show us not just how to hold the jaw lightly, uh, but to move with all mind and body. Number three is move the jaw freely, kind of similar. This is particularly important in uh, Jonage and in Jogi 1 and 2. When we hold the jaw as uh, an object, then it's very difficult to move freely. We'll move in a very jerky manner. Each, me, san, chi, go, ro, shi, ai. It won't, be, it won't be smooth because key is not moving. Right? When we're, we're holding the jaw as an object, that means our mind is stopped where our hands are squeezing the jaw, holding the jaw. Uh, we're not in the dojo, so I cannot show you, but uh, you understand what I'm saying. Um, number uh, four, always keep one hand on the jaw when moving. Um, so this is for, this is for certain people. <laughs> so if you want to do something fancy in your demonstration, you're liable to lose the jaw. Uh, so people, it's like you see the, 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 uh, some people spin the jaw and leave their hand open. Okay. So this is a uh, really silly, uh, if you manage to do it without dropping it, well, that's fine. And maybe it takes some practice and some talent. Yes. But you're just showing up. And uh, this is Shinken Chobu. Every moment is to be considered significant, as significant as any other. Not just some moments are important when someone is attacking you or when the teacher is watching you. Your teacher is watching you. You don't show off, right? You show off when you are away from your teacher. Even if you're a famous instructor, you might be tempted to show off if your teacher is not watching you. So always don't be showing off. One hand is always on the jaw means the key is always flowing, always connected between this 
and the Joe. So the Joe is a part of your body at all times. Um, this is why I wanted to read uh, Purusha. Oh, I said, uh, Suzuki Sensei used to tell us, before you pick up the Boken or the Joe, uh, let, your, let your mind be in the Joe. So before you touch it with your hand, it's a part of you. You've adopted it. It's become one with you. You have accepted it. Then when you pick it up, you can feel the key of the universe moving. You can feel it moving in your body now. So when you pick up this, I pick up this pen. If I pick up this pen, so it's moving in the pen. Of course, everything is made of key. Everything. My glasses, this piece of paper, the water I'm drinking, the pen, and of course, the Joe. We practice Joe and Ken, not because we'll ever use them in daily life, of course, but because... It gives us the experience that everything is like this. Every tool that we use, everything that we touch, uh, even, even, so, even our food, everything is, has this uh, infinite movement, the, the key of the, the universe, the movement of the universe, furoshi. Everything is filled with this. Everything is constantly in this infinitely rapid motion. So picking up an object, picking up a bouquet, picking up a joe, before you pick it up, you connect, then pick up, and then it's moving freely in your hands. The last one, number five, is the line drawn by the tip of the joe is never broken. Um, this is particularly important, again, in Jonage and Jogi. Well, Joe Tori, whatever you're doing with Joe, it's very important that the, the line that's being drawn by that Joe is never ceasing, is never broken. So it's always extending, it's always moving forward through time and space. Right? And not for its own sake, but because it's filled with key of the universe. And, and it's filled with the key of the universe because you're holding it lightly and correctly, and you're one with it. So when you move, everything moves. Your experience is like everything is moving. Okay, so um, maybe uh, I'd like to ask you now to say something about Joe. How about uh, Rene Relacion from Hawaii, from Kauai? Good evening, Sensei. Good evening. Uh, yes, uh, uh, yeah, with Joe movement, I understand that it's, uh, it's reflective of my state of mind at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's very telling. I mean, if I look at it as an instrument, as, as a tool by which I can refine my state of mind, uh, yeah, it's very telling that uh, I do understand when it's jerky and, and you've brought up uh, uh, points as to why it's jerky at times because I'm thinking about something else. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the movement or trying to be correct. And uh, I appreciate your your um, comment about uh, being uh, connecting with something before I touch it or before I pick it up. Uh, it, adds, it adds a whole new dimension to things which I miss often. I mean, I just, I just uh, pick up things or I just use things. And, and uh, you know, I, I have different activities that I do. Uh, and here on Kauai, uh, the bowling alley has opened up. So uh, all of these things, whether it's the Joe or bowling ball, are all very uh, telling. They're all very telling and, and uh, very revealing at the same time. And it's, I, I know the feeling of humbleness. <laughs> so, uh, I might say, uh, just to add to what you said about uh, 
jerky movement. So uh, actually, the same thing happens with the bowling ball. I, I'm not a good. I have bowled, and I know <laughs> that happens with Joe. If you if you're trying to be effective with the Joe, if you're trying to be strong and certain, it, it will be very jerky. Well, if you're trying to throw a strike, and you're <laughs> <laughs> you know, you throw a strike it, because it, the key cannot move when we have this sort of self-conscious intensity that we create when we want to do something well. Mm -hmm. So yes. this, this is one of the things that's most difficult to learn, I think, for Aikido, well, for everyone, for, for and, and maybe in any sport. That uh, if you go, you, you've got to learn how to go about it. Lightly, he said that that song. You gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. <laughs> you just don't barge ahead, and particularly I, when you have a Joe in your hand. Hi, hi. Okay. Thank you, Sensei. Let me hear from someone else, please. Someone want to ask something or say something, or shall I call on you? How about Joni Jackson? 2020. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Jose. Oh, hi. Well, when I think, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, <laughs> 2020. Um, it, it, when I think of the Joe, uh, when I practice, 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 um, even, even now, every day, every day almost, I practice maybe a few minutes only a certain movement but if I have learned for my sake by beginning you know each Nissan or any group of movements and just for years practice only that and little by little and then in a mirror looking at it over and over and little by little one day it's like suddenly the point the tip of the jaw and my one point are, are the same as something changes you know so when I when I give advice at all all I can say is just do it and do it and do it. It will change and evolve. But that's, for me, that's my experience with the Joe the most. I gain a lot from practicing. Yeah, thank you. Changes in spite of us. <laughs> in, in spite of our efforts. Uh, we like to say it's because of my great efforts that I achieved what I've achieved in my life. But generally speaking, um, I spent most of my life standing in the way of my progress. Oh, standing in the way of me uh, realizing what I needed to cognize, uh, understand with my mind and body in order to, 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 to perform freely and joyfully and beautifully while being full of key. So that, that, it's like there's a, and because of the way we're used to thinking with our selfish mind, because we're so used to self-consciousness and watching ourselves perform, this is the biggest bugaboo, you know. On Sunday morning when I'm teaching weapons class or at a seminar, I seem to spend most of my time reminding everyone to stop watching themselves. Right? So, uh, that, that, and, then, and it's everybody, all of us. Because that's the way we live our life. We watch ourselves to make sure that we're not screwing up, that we're doing it correctly, that we're, that we're being a good boy and a good girl. And uh, when it's like when Toi Sensei writes about Rei Se Shin, he said, when Rei Se Shin is fu fully activated, in other words, when mind body unification is operating, uh, selfish desires and uh, weaknesses and doubt and fears, they all don't exist. It's not that we've conquered them. Uh, they, they are free to come right back the minute we, 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 we become self-conscious. But the key is mind-body unification. The key is one point in the lower mind. So this is what moves. You know, one time we were in, uh, I was in Japan and I was training and Toy Sensei was still alive and 
I, I was doing that thing where somebody holds my Joe and I try to move and I, I couldn't do it. And Toy Sensei kept telling me, hold the Joe lightly. No, 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 stop holding the Joe, hold the Joe lightly. So then he told Otsuka, go over and hold Curtis's hips. So he put his hands on my hips and, uh, and he told me, now just let the Joe rest in your hand. And I was, I couldn't believe that it was going to work at all because it was just resting in my hand. Do you understand? And then at some point he gave the nod to Otsuka and Otsuka says he just barged me through like this, just moved me forward. And of course the person just fell down. Okay, so that told me part of it. It told me that I have to move with my whole mind body. I don't try to move the jaw. You don't ever try to move the jaw when somebody's holding it. Or even if they're not holding it, you're only moving your body. The joy, the joy, the joy, the jaw is a joyful expression of your movement, of what's happening in your body. It, it has no meaning on, uh, on its own, by itself. It's an expression of you in that moment. So that's number one is your entire mind and body moves. And the other uh, second part that took longer to learn is what I was saying before about mind is free. Mind is everywhere. You don't have to get there. You, you don't have to drag your body and that poor person's body over there. That's not what we're doing. Mind is everywhere already. Mind leads body. He's holding your jaw. So he's on the bus. Bus goes. The bus is free to go anywhere because mind is already everywhere. Okay. Um, thank you. Hi, Sensei. Brennan Lou. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So I'm um, thinking about our mind or intentions of moving with the Joe um, get us stuck uh, from that intention and um, letting our mind be freely to actually move. And as we in that moment of movement, um, the surprise of achieving them is easy come, easy go. Sometimes not repeating it over and over. And sometimes it's you're in the moment and now you're not. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, that reminds me that when I, once I, when I finally cut correctly for Suzuki Sensei, he said, now do it again. And the very next moment I cut, and he said, no, no, that's not it. So, yes, it's easy to come, easy to go. It's, the mind is so fragile. It, 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 it's so susceptible to selfish thought. You know, uh, if you succeed once, if it happens, it's really in spite of you. But our ego thinks it's because of us. So then we try to do it again right away with intention to move the person. You know, um, it's not like we don't know that we're going to move them. It is already known that there will be a movement. But it's just that we don't need to add to that. Intention means now I will do what I was already going to do. That's like really wallowing in <laughs> control freak land. That's really being a control freak. That's really uh, wanting to be the. Uh, the center of the universe. And when we want to, we just can't be. Well, I think that's what you're saying. It, it's, 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 it's so easy to do it correctly. And then we want to adopt that ease and own it, but we can't because it comes fresh every moment. If it doesn't come fresh in the moment, then it doesn't work. 
right? Exactly. Um, that that belief of interest just inspires me to to be on uh, that interest and and not to be ahead of myself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Lynn Curtis, would you say something about your Joe experience, please? Okay. I knew that was coming. Uh, okay. You know, I have to admit that uh, I have been enjoying so much the meditation, the, you know, sitting on Zoom. And I'm realizing, you know, we're talking about Joe. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, all this time. And I really haven't um, even thought about you know, Joe or, or Ken or, um, and, uh, how, uh, out of practice it's going to, I'm going to be, you know, when we get back into the dojo. And so then I started thinking, and I'm curious about other people's experience is that, um, uh, I have a really hard time and I know this because we did this at a seminar and we've done it at, in our dojo. I, it's almost impossible for me to get through Joe, Joe one or two, practicing the movements without the Joe. Oh. I just, my mind just does not compute. I get lost all over the place. I really, really hard for me. And then the other thing is, um, for all the years that, you know, we've been practicing the, you know, the, the sequence and the kata, um, if you say, okay, let's pick it up from, you know, you know, number seven or number, ten, you know, 10 or something, that is also impossible for me. I have to go, most of the time I have to go, okay, okay, and then now I know how to pick up the sequence. So, and then, so and then I just wonder, well, you know, is it, is it me? And is it even that important to, <laughs> you know, to perform it? Yeah without the actual weapon and to know exactly, okay, what number is what movement and exactly, you know. Okay, well, I, I think that, um, I think that different people have different ways of cognizing things. You know, as we say, some people can visualize things better than other people. And sometimes a person that doesn't visualize things very well does some other things uh, very well. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's like, um, well, when, when, I, when I learned Joe and Ken, so Suzuki Sensei said that if you really want to get proficient, and, and maybe in, at this point I was even just learning to memorize them or learning them, he said, Sit in the morning when you're sitting, breathing, and meditating. When you're done, take a moment and uh, practice Joe 1 and Joe 2, Ken 1, Ken 2. Each, the, Sanchi go, ro, shi cha ku, ju, ju, ichi, ju, ni, ju, sa, ju, shi, ju, go, ju, roku, ju, shi, ju, at, ju, kyu, ni, ju, ni, ju, ichi, ni, ju, ni, each. If you do that, I, I can still do that only because I did it thousands of times. So I'm sure that if you practice that way in the beginning, you, you, you would be able to uh, either chant it like that, just count it out, or move with your body, you know, the same way and count. I'm sure that you can do that if you just... Uh, set your mind to it and decided, okay, that's the way I'm going to learn to do it. But if you didn't really spend time doing that, and you don't have a knack for, like I said, visualizing, then it might be difficult. 
Uh, can somebody, does, does everybody, what do you say? Do, you, does, do other people have the same reaction that Lynn describes? Uh, Lillian, Paiva? Yes, since then. Um, probably the easiest way for me to explain it is when I used to teach line dancing and you do four counts or eight counts of a movement. And people always said I was a great teacher, but it wasn't that I was a great teacher. It's because I was dyslexic. I'd have to do the first eight counts. Then I'd say, okay, we're going to do this movement and I'm going to add it to the next eight counts and do it all again and then add more and start from the beginning again. And that's just the way my brain works. Um, so I can very well understand what Lynn Sensei is saying. And I kind of agree for me. Um, when I sometimes I'm in the dojo and I'm explaining something to the students and I go, oh, uh, do sheesh and I go oh wait ah, I'm not worried about it give me a second <laughs> you know? it's who I am it's what happened so I don't worry about it you know I don't think I have your skill <laughs> yeah yeah okay may uh, may I say something else yes, I wanted to say that on um these principles, the, the new ones or the rewriting of them closer to the Japanese on the Joe and the Ken. I think it, for me, it, it's not only sort of more logical, although logical is the wrong word, it makes it very easier in a way to simplify in my head, even, like you said, un um, how do you say it, un unjuggling the words or, um, to me, I love the way that they're rewritten. Even the the uh, can. I love the one when number four went from "do not slacken your key" to "do not lose your attention." Because that really speaks to me. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that because that's our intention. And I'm, I think the word you're looking for is clumsy. It, some of the old translation is very clumsy. And uh, we're not supposed, we're not, I'm not consciously trying to make it graceful as much as I am trying to make it simple and to the point. And because, and if Toy Sensei had, spoke English like we do, he would never have let those translations come out because that's not what he's saying. It's often not what he's saying. And sometimes it's just like what he's saying, but it's not what he's saying. And that little difference makes for you, for the person that's listening, that's a native English speaker, that makes a big difference. So that's why, uh, you know, Shinichi Toy Sensei said, okay, you use them for English speaking people. We're not gonna rewrite the whole thing, but please use them for English speaking. Um, okay, so how about Charles Boyer? Good evening, Sensei. Hi. Um, yeah, well, so it's getting, uh, responding to what uh, Lynn Curtis Sensei was talking about, I, I could say that, um, you know, Joe too, if uh, I had to stop in the middle or pick it up halfway through or something, I would probably stumble around a little bit um, because we don't practice it very often. And uh, I need to practice it more myself. So, but I was uh, also considering earlier what you were saying about um, the how, well, being stuck and moving freely and how this applies to our life. Because, uh, you know, it, uh, Joe is a good, very good reflection of all of this kind of process that we go through in life. Awkward sometimes, um, uncoordinated, uh, trying to be correct, trying to be graceful, trying to do it correct, you know, right. Um, all of those things come out with Joe. So. Well, that's what I was thinking earlier. 
when you were talking. Yes. Well, actually, all of our practices reveal the same thing to us, right? Whether it's even just, uh, well, we used to do stretching exercises or Aikitaiso, or, you know, Hitori Waza, or three minute exercise, or Oneness Rhythm Taiso. These things that we kind of, and many people think are not so important. I think they're incredibly important. You know, one time a teacher, uh, Mariama Sensei, asked me to do this mawashi 1,000 times every day for one year. And, you know, he, he, uh, I, uh, Johnny was saying, if you just do something a whole lot, <laughs> that's basically it. <laughs> just keep doing it, and it'll start to reveal itself to you. Um, and you, you know, people could try that if they wanted. It's quite an interesting experience. Uh, but you can pick anything, actually, you know. It doesn't have to be Mawashi. I, I, I don't know. But though I think that was a very good one because it's so much in our movement in Aikido, you know, the Mawashi. Okay. So I want someone else to talk more. I don't want to talk more. Oh. Ad Vogels, Sensei, you are here. Your son is not here, but you are here. I'm happy to see you. Please Thank you. Something to us about. about well, <clears throat> my concern is uh, how we can learn the best. So I was reading this, this uh, book about Rembrandt van Rijn. You know him, the painter? Rembrandt? Oh, Rembrandt. The Dutch, the Dutch painter. And I was reading a book about uh, uh, how he was teaching to his students uh, how to learn to paint. And all the uh, principles you were reading, that was uh, what he was uh, teaching his students. But there was a slight difference. Because the, uh, <clears throat> the idea is they have first to have an impression of what they want to create and then they have to uh, use the uh, brushes just to uh, uh, create this thing on the painting. On the and so I wonder when we are uh, teaching how to use the, uh, uh, the Joe, would it be not better to use so often as possible with a partner? so we have uh, something uh, as a creation than uh, moving along with the Joe because that's like uh, uh, practicing how to paint without uh, an idea so just uh, go on with the brush and do nothing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's excellent. I think that is great. Yes, and we do that. We do actually yeah. that quite often. And it makes a big difference because people suddenly realize, oh, this guy's trying to hit me here. I have to do this. It changes the whole way they move. So thank you very much for that. Um, okay, anyone else want to say anything before we're done? Um, Sensei, yeah. Gloria from Oahu. Um, what Lynn was saying, I understand uh, because when I was, um, doing my uh, master's recital for organ uh, as a student, I had to play an hour's worth of music by memory. And I spent two years working on that, and I realized that at practicing things for uh, a very long time, repeating things, doing things over, doing it in sections, whatever, I could sit and play the music in my head, feel it in my fingers, and see it on the page. And if I got to a point where it was blurry, I didn't know it well enough, and I would be likely to forget it in performance. And so when that happened, I knew I needed to go back and to do that part again and again until I could actually see it in my head. And uh, I've done the practicing uh, the Joe uh, and the Vokan in my head, and uh, I can't do it as fast as you can <laughs> and see what I'm doing, but it really helps me to see the movements in my head in my mind as I am uh, doing the counting. Yeah, very 
interesting. Um, sometimes doing some other discipline altogether, just like we take what we learn in Aikido to daily life, we always say, you know, transfer this to whatever you're doing in daily life, make sure you're practicing it. Sometimes some other thing that's completely unrelated will give us an insight into how we need to practice in Aikido. Particularly if we're very good at something like you are. You know, if we have something like your music where you're, 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 you've done this, your black belt already, you know? So you can transfer that. I think people don't often do that, you know? They don't realize that. Because when you come to Aikido, you might be a white belt. But there's something that you do that you're very good at already, right? And whatever that is, it has a lesson for you. It has a, something to teach us about how to approach this work. You know, uh, I, at one point I, I decided to learn, Lynn and I decided to learn windsurfing. This is many years ago. And uh, I was definitely white belt suddenly <laughs> in windsurfing. <laughs> But my practice in Aikido gave me the patience and the understanding to keep going and keep doing it and be willing to be humiliated uh, or what felt like humiliation to the ego. Uh, and then the joy began to emerge. So I think it works both ways. So we're all very fortunate to have something like Aikido uh, that, that that Aikido itself that can give us this kind of insight into uh, life. Okay, I want to thank you very much. Have a nice 4th of July for you Americans. And uh, I think there's something happening in Europe because a bunch of people told me they're going on vacation, but maybe it's just coincidence. So everybody stay safe, please, and healthy, and I'll see you soon. Sunday morning. Bye-bye.